Hello friends, welcome back to my gaming channel Neon. So let's continue on our gameplay walkthrough of Tell Me Why. So I will start my video the same way that I have been doing the previous one by reading one of the stories. The Goblins and the Ice Cave. I read this. The Princess and the Two Thieves. I read this. The princess makes new friends. Let's read this one. Once upon a time, in an ancient and deep forest, there lived a wise princess in a big wooden house. She had been living alone for just fine for a very long time. Until the day she noticed food and small items were disappearing from her house. The theft went on and on until the day her last cake which has been made with the last of her eggs, the last of her fruit, the last of her nuts, the last of her flour, when the last cake was stolen too. And all she found at the scene of the crime were two trails of tiny feet in the spilled flour, leading to a hidden hatch in the floorboards. The princess did not try to open the hatch, nor she did try to break in. She was too tired and too hungry. All she could do was cry in silence, alone in the big wooden house hidden in the ancient and deep forest. She cried for a long time, until evening arrived and then she cried some more. Suddenly, a tiny voice came from under the house. What is that noise you make? It asked. We do not like it, not one bit. I am crying because you two are mean to me, whoever you are. You stole all the food I had and I will starve before the end of the long and cold winter. The hat opened just a peep, revealing two frowning faces peering from the darkness of their hideout. But we are hungry too, said the second creature. We have been hiding in this cave for a long time and now this winter is upon us and we need food. The Princess dried her eyes and smiled at the two goblins. If we were friends, we could share the cakes you stole from me. The two thieves spat and smirked. A friend? What is that? The princess frowned, for she realized the two tiny thieves were as lonely as she was. <coughs> A friend is someone you love and care for. Someone you would never hurt. We never hurt each other and we care for each other, said the goblins at the same time. Does that mean we are friends? Yes, that's exactly it. And if we were friends, you would not hurt us? Of course not. Friends trust each other. <coughs> the goblins shook their little heads. We trust no one, for no one trusts us. The world. Their words made the princess cry again, for now she understood that the two creatures were not as lonely as she was here in the big wooden house, but they had been lonely since they were born. You are making that noise again, from the dog. Please stop that, for it makes us feel unhappy. Are you a witch? Is this some sort of magic? I, it makes you unhappy because we are friends, said the princess, but we don't know you and you are not like us. Sometimes friendship comes right away, even between people who are very different. Does it mean we can't steal from you anymore? Yes, but that's what we do. We are the crafty goblins who live under your house. Well, then maybe we could arrange something. Is that what your friends do? What friends do? Yes, I believe they do. And this is how the princess met the crafty goblins and how they became friends. Okay, that's the full cool story. Now let's proceed in the main story. Wash your own cups and dishes. Okay, some kind of memory is on the town. This is your lunch area, keep it clean. I'm not that hungry. First time I've been in here since that night. Eddie was so uncomfortable he dropped a vase. The 
before seeing the memory, let's see the room. Huh. What's that back there? No way. Have you been hiding back here all this time? Another collectible. The Ice King. Let's see this collectible, the Ice King. So I think this is the last one of this chapter. You see the bar here. The Ice King is the lord of the whole forest. He is so powerful that no one dares to challenge his commands. That's it. What was that uh, he was looking into? So, isn't Brown waiting for us? We should head back to his office. Yeah, we should. But let's check the memory out here. Here, um, have a seat. All right. Ah, damn it. No, sorry. Huh, they kept this? What? It's that vase. They glued it back together. Okay, looks like we finished examining this part. Okay, we are back. And I don't think there is anything else out here, so let's head back. Rest. <coughs> let's get back to Brown. Okay, another memory. Why did you separate us? Is Ollie okay? Ollie's just fine, honey. They're all in the other room having cocoa. Everything's gonna be okay. I need to ask you a few questions now. Come with me. You're awfully quiet. Yeah, sorry. Trying to deal, but it's a lot. Okay, hope oh, there are no other memories here that I am missing. I don't see anything else, so let's head on. I don't think I can go to the holding. Okay, nothing else left here. So let's head back up. Hey, sorry that took so long. Sometimes these old folks want us to come out just because they're lonely. No worries, Uncle. Hey, do you remember this guy? Yeah, of course. How can I forget? Tyler Ronan, back in Delos Crossing. <laughs> it's uh, good to be back. And just look at you, a man grown. Yep, guess I ate my Wheaties. The whole clan's so proud of you. How you work with those kids at Fireweed. I always say children are the future. <laughs> I thought that was Whitney Houston. <laughs> Come on, bro. She stole her entire act from me. Everybody knows that. Look at you two. Reunited and it feels so good, huh? <laughs> yeah, not sure how I got by without this dork. Look, Eddie, we aren't here just to say hi. We found something in Marianne's room. Things aren't really adding up anymore, and we've got questions. Oh yeah? Uh, Marianne worried about something? Did she mention anything about us that might have been worrying her? About Tyler in particular? No. She dealt with those kind of worries all on her own. Kept the rest of us at arm's length. I see. I will tell you one thing, though. Your mom. 
never knew her to hate anyone for being unconventional. Usually, it's the other way around. What were her last days like? Did anyone mention anything about her behavior in the days leading up to that day? Anything at all? No. Everyone I talked to said it took them by surprise. Did you see her at all? Like, in those last few days? No. I hadn't seen her for weeks. Maybe a month before. These are the two questions I asked, and there is nothing else, right? Thank you. Thanks, Uncle Eddie. If you want my advice, nothing good comes from stirring up old memories. <laughs> we don't really have a choice about that. There's always a choice, son. I know sometimes it doesn't seem like it, but there is. <laughs> Can we take a look at her file? Maybe we'd see something you didn't. Her file? Her case file, her police file, whatever you call it. You keep those pretty much forever, right? We do, but I can't just pull it out right here, right now. There are procedures. But you're the chief. Which makes it even more important that I follow procedures. Look, Chief Brown, are you going to help us? Or are you going to be a cop about Tyler! This? No, it's fine. Tyler, I know you resent me, but fireweed was the best deal I could get you. I'm not mad about fireweed. But I may be a little salty you kept my sister away for seven fucking years. That's what this is about? Look, that was the court's recommendation. They're the experts. I just went along. Yeah, sure you did. Trust me, son. We all believed that what happened that night was self-defense. But we couldn't be sure. <laughs> I can't believe this. Look, we couldn't be sure, okay? I was trying to protect you both. So you still not sure? What? You still think keeping us apart was the right call? She was traumatized. We needed each other to heal. And you took that away from us. So why didn't you let your sister visit when you turned 18 Uncle, then, huh? Uncle, please. Let's move on. She's never going to tell you how much that hurt her. But it did. That was about me. It wasn't about her. Allison gets that. And three years is nothing compared to seven. Right, Allie? Being kept apart was wrong. Eddie did his best for me. Let's support Eddie. Eddie was just doing his best to protect me. To protect his family. I thought I was your family. You are. Seven years apart didn't change that. Ten years apart didn't either. But Eddie's family too. Look, we've all fucked up. We've all hurt each other. But isn't that what family's for? Can't we just move on? Sounds like the right call. <laughs> Times like this, I... I wonder who raised who. But we're gonna stay the night at the old house. We better get going. You wanna grab a bite first? It's on me. Don't wanna send you out there with empty stomachs. I would not turn that down. Okay, let's go. Tyler wants to look at the case file. Oh, what? Oh, what the hell is that? What did I just see? to kill you! No! Please! Please! Mom, no. 
I killed her. And when they come, that's what we're gonna tell them. No, no. Yes. We look out for each other. That's what goblins do. And brothers and sisters. It's gonna be okay. We're gonna be okay. <laughs> Okay, that is the ending of the first episode. Tyler and Allison. Allison was happy that Tyler accepted Eddie's kiss offer. <laughs> Allison was delighted to solve the brother uh, Princess Riddle with her brother. Tyler felt unrecognized by Allison's lack of trust in the story. Yeah, that I chose uh, Allison's memory. Tyler sensed a rift between him and Allison when she sided with Eddie at the station. Oh my god. There is a, a distance is being created between them. <clears throat> but we had to gain Eddie's trust also. Here I could have done something else like Alison was happy, Alison Tyler is becoming distant. Sam can see. Tyler earned Sam's respect. Tessa opened up to the twins about Marianne. Eddie felt validated by Allison's family plea when she sided with him at the station. So what now? Well, he's obviously not going to give us the truth. So I say we go get it ourselves. Wait, you're not seriously thinking of breaking and entering a police archive? Go big or go home. Okay, so he's going to break and enter into the, or they are going to break and enter into the police archive. So we completed chapter one, right? Let's start with chapter two. Once upon a time, in a deep and ancient forest, there lived a pair of crafty goblins. The 
crafty goblins did everything together. Until one day, when darkness overwhelmed the big wooden house in which they lived. Blamed for the darkness, Brother Goblin was forced to leave the forest, while his sister had to stay behind. Ten years later, they were finally reunited, and together, they decided to confront the darkness in the big wooden house. Though they sought the help of their friends in the forest, they found that no one wanted to delve into the long gone past. This is how the goblins found themselves alone in the woods trying to discover why darkness had submerged the big wooden house. play compass and north star in the woods. Be sure to wear your hat then. <laughs> you be sure to wear your hat. <laughs> <laughs> All right, who wants ice cream? Me! Eat up. Without a word, she went out and buried the tiara in the ground beneath the sapling. And as the final scoop of dirt fell, the tiara felt truly gone. And with it, the final link to her old self. She could only go forward and find a new place for herself in this world, where she was no longer truly a princess in a tiara and a beautiful gown, but a wan woman alone in a deep and ancient wood. And that was how the princess lost her most precious treasure. And her title. I don't like that story. There were no goblins, and it was depressing. We won't read it again. I love you, Mom. Not me. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> love you, Mom. Mwah. I love you, too. Sleep well and dream, my doves. What a waste. What is she eating? Allison! Ollie! Oh. Allison, help! Oh, that night.
chapter 2 family secrets okay But they didn't grow up in this house, right? Most probably like what it could have been. Why didn't they have any father? You doing all right? I thought coming here would be closing a chapter of our lives, you know? And instead we've spun off a whole miserable prequel trilogy. <laughs> okay, no, we're not letting ourselves do this again. Come on, up. My numbing labor's a great way to forget your troubles. Uh, can't we just have coffee instead? No. On your feet, soldier. Let's take a break from packing and sort out the furniture. Mm. If we get enough done, I'll drive you into town and buy you a gallon of ice cream. Mint chocolate chip, two gallons. Let's do this. <laughs> Goblin face is keep, dollar sign is donate or sell, and trash can is, well, trash. By the way, I cleared out most of the stuff from the bathroom this morning, but I left you the toilet. How very generous of you. So... Sort the ground floor furniture, finish the kitchen sort. Let's see what Everywhere I look, there's just stuff, stuff, and more stuff. Mary and the magpie. So we played this part as Tyler. Now we are playing as Alice. Hello, ancient broken down machines. That will be the future owner's problem.
They are getting it ready, getting the house ready for selling. Nothing to do here, I suppose. We don't really want to keep anything in here, right? Let's try going in here. What about that dresser? If you want your towels to rot, go for it. Mm. We could clean it up. Maybe someone could clean it up? It's well made. Your call. Keep. Keeping it. I'll try to keep as much as possible. Thanks for clearing out those cabinets. Not my pleasure. Oh, ew, ew, ew. Raven Sarah. Oh, God. I can still taste it. Put it away. Ugh. Say ah. Uh. I remember cutting off shaving cream beards with these. Oh, yeah. Okay. Nothing else here. Thanks for clearing out those cabinets. Not my pleasure. I read this, I guess. Or not. Dumpin' cake. Ingredients. One can cherries, one can crushed pineapple, eight ounce chopped walnuts, crushed out by twins, chocolate chip for the cake mix, two cups flour, flour sifted, one teaspoon salt, one cup white sugar, crushed out brown sugar or half bread syrup, one teaspoon baking powder, three fourth cup butter, not cold, use margarine in a 9 into 13 inch pan, mix cherries and pineapple. Sprinkle cake mix over pineapple and cross mixture. Sprinkle walnut over top. Walnut crossed out, drawing of chocolate bar instead. Bake in a 350 degree F over 35 or 40 minutes until golden brown. Every day. Please mom. Ancient appliances. You are staying here. Although, that oven looks in okay enough shape. No way. We are not moving the oven. You're doing a great job. Uh, thanks? <laughs> Crummy table and wobbly chairs. Uh, table and chairs, we can sell them. We can make some pretty good money if we sell this. And I know I'd end up eating on the couch most of the time anyway. Oh, oh God, that's, what's that smell? <laughs> oh, what's that smell? Another memory. Smells like delicious garbage. Ooh, yes, delicious indeed. <laughs> or could it be Stinky Pants Sam? <laughs> oh, Stinky Pants Sam! <laughs> Come on now. Sam got that smell getting a skunk out of our barn. Be nice. <gasps> a skunk? What did you do to her? Is she okay? <laughs> sure is. She just went hunting for food and couldn't get back out. All she needed was a little nudge to get her on her way. Sam Kansky, hero of skunk kind. I remember being super impressed by him, and it made me want to be a wild animal superhero too. <laughs> you hungry? We have 
a whole lot of nothing. <laughs> uh, I was hoping maybe you could make me one of those pickle and ketchup sandwiches. No pickles. Ketchup, maybe why did you remind me? No pickles. I'm sorry, sir. We are all out of pickles today. Could I interest you in a ketchup only sandwich? <laughs> Looks like there's still a bottle back here. Uh, ew. Says the guy who used to eat peanut butter with ranch. Mm -mm. So good. Anything else? What to do with this? We can keep the table. Tables are expensive. And besides, this one's an Allison and Tyler original. Okay, another collectible. Goblins What's this doing here? down here? Goblins are here. Is <laughs> that gum? Ugh. I guess that was probably me. The big frog. Okay, let's look. Check this out. Collectible, the big frog. The big frog is an effervescent creature who tries to be kind, but is also a tireless gossip. The Ice King punished her once by telling her his deepest secret. If she ever tells anyone, she'll lose her voice forever. <laughs> I completely forgot we had a pet vole for a few days. Poor volcano. She was in rough shape when we found her. Good thing Marianne actually knew what she was doing with injured wildlife. Another memory. Lasagna, lasagna! Finish your salad first. Thank you, Tessa. You're a lifesaver. Oh, don't worry about it. They're just leftovers from the restaurant. What about Volcano? She needs to eat her lunch too. Oh, I'm quite right, love. Ugh, she can have my corn. <laughs> Here you go, little one. You must be hungry too. <laughs> Tessa really did keep us all fed. She always tried to take care of everyone. Still does, I guess. Okay. I guess it's finally time to take these pictures down. Yeah. Still deciding what to do with them. They're happy memories. Let's skip them. I mean, most of them are pretty happy memories. I guess. You look cute here. That's not me. I mean, it is, but... Don't worry, I get it. But not really. I get it. It's just weird seeing myself like that again. Damn. Didn't think a picture could throw me like this anymore. Did therapy help? I'm sorry. That sounds really rough. Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm like a thousand times better. But I've got a ways to go before I'm comfortable taking my shirt off. Which is why I'm scheduling my top surgery as soon as we sell this house. No more putting a binder on every morning. God, that sounds fucking amazing. Yeah. Totally. Just so you know, I'll be there to help out when you do. Whatever you need. <laughs> Thanks. All right. What's your verdict, Ronan? You know what? I'll keep a few. To remind us how far we've come. Okay. What about this one? Who's that guy? Oh man. I love this one. Why do I look so pissed? I remember loving this. Maybe because Marianne was sticking a camera in your face? Come on, smile, like Allison. Another memory, maybe. Yeah, another memory. Come on, honey, smile, like Allison. Hold up your fish. It's not my fish anymore. Allison stole it. <laughs> My sister. 
the fish thief. <laughs> you were just being bratty. Was I, though? Yes. All I did was help clean it when we were out on the porch. Eddie had to force you to share. Allison, I asked you to clean up the coffee table three times already. <sighs> Oops. I forgot. Ugh. Gross stain is gross. Ugh. What happened? Some unfortunate spillage that brought about the end of indoor tea parties. I hid the stain with my toys, forgetting that they would eventually be picked up. Brilliant move, Ronan. You were no better. Well, I seem to recall a time you stole an egg, put it on the couch, and sat on it because you wanted a pet chicken. We don't talk about that. Uh-huh. Well, at least I didn't leave a stain. <laughs> Okay, another memory. Steady now. Take your time. He's not gonna jump up and do the cha-cha. What about me? I want to clean the fish too. It's not even your fish. You didn't catch anything. Ugh. Only because you wouldn't stop talking and scared all the fish away. Keep your eyes on what you're doing. Allison, when we're done with this half, you can take over and do the other one. That sounds fair. Yes. You're right. I was kind of being a brat. <laughs> Let's clean the table. All right. I'll clean it up. Thanks. While you do that, I'll check out the furniture. I'm guessing you want to keep the coffee table? What about you? If there's anything you want, speak now. I'm not really planning on bringing furniture to Denali. And if I need a base in Juno, you'll have all the furniture I need. How very non-committal of you. All right, I'll keep it. I really like that armchair. You like that mold smell for your forest chat? It'll look sharp next to your tree stump nightstand. I'll be the most stylish mountain man ever. But I was actually thinking it should go in your library. Library? We may not even have a living room. <laughs> I have faith in you. Let's keep. Maybe it'll be salvageable with a deep clean? And finally, I hate to say it, but the couches get a one-way ticket to the dump. No protest here. I think I have permanent knee damage from a decade of bumping into the corner of those damn things. Well, then that's it for the living room. You are relieved from your duties. What? Are you gonna keep doing that? Yes, you are. Hey, Allison, come take a break with me. <laughs> Having fun, are we? This is getting utterly ridiculous. <laughs> I'm having fun. I'll do it one more time. Yeah. Let's keep it. Nothing else here? Hey, clean freak. You want coffee? Sure. That's a nice face. I wonder if my horse figurine is still in there. You're what now? You're welcome to check. You're welcome to stick your hand in there to check. Starting the fire again? Yeah, I'm gonna boil some water. You want something to drink? Choose tea. Coffee. I think I should choose coffee. Would you rather have instant coffee or instant coffee? Hmm. Nah, sorry. I'm more of a tea person. Get it? Tea? As in... Mm-hmm. How long have you been waiting to make that joke? Longer <laughs> than I'm willing to admit. <laughs> I am so glad Eddie came through on the caffeine. Shh. Did you hear that? 
The Ice King is sending us a warning. Another memory. For your punishment, said the Ice King, you shall be banished from the forest. And if you dare come back before the new moon, you shall feel my anger in your gut. Hear it in the wind. Whoosh! <laughs> huh. Do you think the Ice King would really react that way? He may be intimidating, but he's always fair and never mean. Oh, yeah. Y you're right. Maybe he tells the goblins to help the people they hurt instead? Great idea, sweetie. Why don't we think about it at dinner? I'll put everything away for safekeeping while you go wash your hands. Can you put them in the binder so they don't get stained? Of course, love. I still think my dark and twisty version was better. We put so many hours into that book. Yeah. Our binder was full of extra drawings and incomplete stories. Think they're all still in the kitchen drawer? We should go take a look. Yeah, I will. I just want to make sure I have checked everything here. And I think I have. I can't hey, be Allison, Let's look at our drawings. Let's keep it. I'm not gonna do that actually. Where the drawing? You mean? Oh, they're in there. Allison's first drafts. Right. Because I didn't contribute at all. Come on. I know you did. I can't believe she kept all these. You'd think putting them on the fridge for a couple of weeks would have been enough. You know how we thought of ourselves as the goblins? Did you ever get the sense that maybe Marianne was the princess in the stories? Uh, yeah. She called her bedroom the princess's sanctum, and she was all alone in the woods, in this house, until we showed up. She was. Alone but with a few friends who helped her along the way. What are you doing? Research. So, if Marianne was the princess, then who were all the rest? And here we go. Oh, come on. Humor me. Memory? Hmm. Pelican. She was the most generous one. <laughs> yeah, but there was always a catch. <sighs> Poor Moose. Really didn't do him justice. Hmm. Justice? Kind of ironic, huh? Considering he was the lawful good one? Too bad the law isn't really just. The bear was the most helpful one. He was always around. Stalking her? What? No. I mean, he was kind of always there, lurking. So, I guess... Hmm, Pelican is hard. I forgot the name. You go here. And... Lawful one, and that's the beer. What help would the book of goblins do? <laughs> All right, I think I'm done. You sure? Mm. Let's try this. How do you like them apples? You know, I think you might be onto something. What about these guys? I don't see them being real life people, or this one. This way. 
way. <gasps> what's... What's going on? I... I don't know. I, is he here? Is he really here? I, I don't know. I'm scared. Go away! Yeah! Go back to the forest! I forgot about that. We'd been pretending he was there. And then... Suddenly he was. That was the only time that happened, right? Allison? Wait. It felt way too real. It was... Us. Pushing our imagination way too far. Maybe not. Great. Sam Kansky, Grandmaster of Bad Timing. We're not done with this conversation. Morning, Sam. Well, hi, goblins. I ran into Chief Brown who said you were starting the cleanup on the house this morning, so, uh, I kind of figured you might need some supplies. That's... Thank you. That was very thoughtful. Oh, uh, also got something for you, Tyler. Every man needs a good knife. There you are. Thanks, Sam. Good. Good, yeah. Oh, and before I forget, for the lady of the house. It was your mom's favorite recipe. Still make it darn near every week. Think of her every time. Uh, thanks. But we don't have a stove. Still no electricity. Oh, yeah. That fuse box is busted. <laughs> Just another thing I've been meaning to put back together around here. Where is it? I can take care of it. Oh, I don't doubt you can. But, uh, I've been kicking this thing back to life for the last 20 some years. I'll give you a hand. All right. Box is in the barn. Follow me. We'll be right behind you. Well, I guess old bears can learn new tricks. <laughs> yep. Come on. Let's go get our electricity back on. Yeah, I think I'll end it here, but before ending, I will read another story. <coughs> the princess makes new friends. I read this. Next one is The Bear's Big Paws. Once upon a time, in a deep and ancient forest, the old bear was out looking for snack when he spied a bee's nest in the hole, in a hole high up a tree. The tree was dry and brittle, but the old bear was hungry, and so he made his way to the nest. But when he got there, he found a giant paw couldn't fit into found his giant paw couldn't fit into the hole. Determined, he tried to force it inside. But the effort caused the branch below him to snap. The old bear tumbled to the ground and landed with a painful thump. He lay there, stunned from the fall, when all of a sudden something hit him. Something beat him. The bite was followed by another and another and another. Carpenter ants were swarming, swarming up his legs. You see, they had been nesting in the branch and they did not appreciate being forced from their home. The old bear howled and jumped to his feet to dance around as he swatted and snapped, but the big paws couldn't do much about the tiny ants. When he finally managed to squish or scare them all off, the old bear heard someone laughing. The crafty goblins had seen the whole thing. Clumsy old bear, that is. Those big paws aren't good for anything, are they? They 
then they sped off, leaving old bear's pride hurting just as bad as his boy. He lumbered through the forest, hungry and sad. Maybe I am just a clumsy old bear, he won. And my big bad, big old paws aren't good at anything. At that moment, the old bear heard a sad, sad noise. What's that? he wondered, and he followed the sound to where a mountain goat stood at atop a boulder high up a hillside. Old bear, she cried, old, uh, old bear, please help, my kid is stuck. Sure enough, a tiny mountain goat was cramped inside the stones, bleating sadly. The old bear began to walk towards them, and they stopped. I am probably just going to make it worse, he thought. But then the goat kid started to bleak even louder. The old bear put away his fear. He climbed to where the goat was trapped, careful of where he stepped and trying not to think of how he had only just fallen out of a tree. Every now and then the ground would slide away from under his feet, but he kept going. When he reached the goat kid, he put his mighty paws against one of the boulders and began to push. At first it didn't budge, but he dug in and pushed even harder. Finally, the boulders parted just wide enough to let the kid scramble to safety. The old bear released the boulder and let out a roar of cram. Roar! Thank you, gushed the mama goat, and she and her kid bounced off up the mountain. The old bear watched them go with a smile and then made his way back down the hillside, wiggling his rump in crumb as he went. To his surprise, the crafty goblins waited at the bottom of the hill. We saw the whole thing, they said. We were wrong. You aren't just a clumsy old bear and your paws are good for helping others. The old bear forgave the goblins for doubting him because he had doubted himself just as much. He never again thought his paws weren't good at anything, even though sometimes they weren't always great at everything. And that was how the old bear proved his heart was bigger than his paws. Okay, nice story. So, I can end this video here. So, that's it for this video. I will see you again in the next video. Bye-bye.